Yeah, I think I need to bring this down a bit. Yeah, set this up. Okay, there's no spinning. Okay. Um, what? Okay. Yeah. I think it's better this way. Maybe we can all can see my face clearly. And I hope I'm audible enough. It's great to have you join me today. Um, just before we go into it, um, give me a moment. Let me just come quickly send um, the link to the class where you can know. It's great. It's great to have you join me tonight again. Uh, I apologize for the break in transmission. I think that was a um, sort of poor network. But it's a good thing we're live. So um, let's just um, head straight into it. So um, this classroom, this is a classroom, and um, we are treating the course um, GST 103 as um, fundamentals of a computer. And um, this is going to be, uh, this, is, uh, this is the fifth class we are taking we've um talked about a couple of some things we've talked about a lot of things actually so um this is the fifth class we are taking so um in our last class we said we discussed um we said something about virus computer virus so uh, we um were able to discuss on how to identify one what they are made of what they are capable of doing um how we can um, actually guide our computer against virus this um we're able to talk about all this um and I, so and it was a very um, interesting class so um tonight still in line of what we treated in our previous class just a little bit a little bit away from it we are going to be discussing about computer hardware and software what it's what exactly does it mean by computer hardware what exactly does it mean by computer software how important are they to the, um, the functioning of um, a computer and um, all this will be discussed tonight you know, we'll talk about the components of hardware uh, we'll talk about um, component of hardware fair devices um, the auxiliary equipment so we're going to talk about that tonight so um, the hardware components which is the first thing we're going to be talking about on that hardware component we're going to be talking about the essential component of computer the system units the front of the system units and back of the system units that we have inside the system unit so we have the system the essential component of computer we have the system units we have the front the back and the inside we have inside the system units we have um inside we have um Okay, um, I think I might need to respond to this quickly. Um, so you just have to. Okay, just quickly respond to this from the classroom. Okay, it's just somebody just told me, oh, Sam just told me she's having issues logging in. So I'm just gonna quickly, I think it was while like, um, well, interrupted by the network. Okay, close it um, and open it again. Open it again. Or restart, restart it, okay. Okay, somebody else is also drawing my attention to how difficult they are having difficulties joining the class. Okay, close the app and Try it again. Try it again. No. Okay. Um. I think. Yeah. I think. Um. 
that is that for that okay okay do it again now okay do it again now okay the network um the network or the signal the signal um the signal was interrupted you just close your your youtube app your yt app and open it again okay so we have okay i i am live now awesome so i think um we are good to go um so that's that for that so sorry about that <laughs> it's about uh, it's a matter of urgency some messages from the classroom so i think she'll be joining us now so um, speaking about inside the system units, we have the central processing units, we have the power units, we have the motherboard, we have the memory chips, and we have types of memory. We have um, the primary memory, we have the read-only memory, and we have the random access memory. We have the secondary memory, which are our digs, terrestrial memory, floppy disk, which is also referred to as a diskette. So we have a um, as the CD-ROM. So um, okay, um, let me just let me just um, okay, let me just clear attend to this. Okay, don't use um, use the link. Go to YouTube. Okay, awesome. She, she has done it. Awesome. Okay, uh, that's that's great. I think you are live now. Uh, I think you, uh, if you are live with us now, just um say something. Okay, let me just quickly respond to this. Don't uh, use um the link. I sent okay now just um go to okay I see directly instead yeah I think that's that's good okay um <clears throat> okay yeah um chicks just go to YouTube directly yeah and i think that should be resolved okay um nothing nothing actually nothing um just go go to your youtube um you the first i think that should be the first um sets of videos okay um so the videos should show the class okay miss just nice with us awesome we just now great um thank god you are with us uh, i think um the issue has been rectified um yep the issue has been rectified okay um just add straight um add straight to your youtube already and um, the very first set of videos you'll be seeing should be one of the videos should be showing um, um yeah one of the videos should be showing the class since you're a subscriber so definitely YouTube should um, notify you just an alternative whenever it doesn't work like this the link if the link doesn't work just come directly to YouTube you will see it, the first set of videos on your on the very first set of videos you'll be seeing when you join if I'm live YouTube will show it to you okay okay that's awesome she's with us now she's awesome so um i believe we can just go into it so um okay good evening good evening it's great it's great to have you join us so just before um 
just before you join, we um and I've uh, been talking about what we're treating tonight, which is actually the computer hardware and software. You know, in our retrospective class, we spoke about computer viruses, you know, how we can identify computer viruses, how we can, um, what type of viruses we have and what viruses are capable of doing um, damage the AVOC, um, uh, they're capable of um, doing on our system, our computer, we're able to establish that and we were also able to identify how to protect our computer against the viruses. So today, we are treating module two, uh, page for the tree on the soft copy. Um, and we have treating computer hardware and software. And um, so in this, in tonight's class, we'll be talking about the hard, hardware components. And under the hardware component, we have the essential computers, essentials of computers. We have the system units. I, I apologize about the noise in the background. It's from a neighboring that from a neighbor, neighboring door making a noise. So let's just not um, let's not be distracted by, by the by the noise. So we have um, the system units. We have the front of the system units. We have the back of the system unit. Then we have the inside of the system unit. So we have inside the system unit. We have the central processing unit. I believe you all can hear me clearly. We are about six streaming this live. Um, if you are yet to um, identify yourself, please do well to do so and do well to smash the like button as well. Just two persons that like the video out of six of us. So um, let's just go back into the material. And uh, we have um, the central processing unit inside the system unit now. Now the sub topic of the system unit we have the central processing unit we have the power supply unit we have the motherboard we have the memory chips and we have the types we have different types of memory in the memory chip so under that we have the primary memory we have which is the read only memory and the uh, random access memory the read only memory is uh, also referred to as rom and uh, um, random access memory abbreviated as RAM. Also, we have three persons who have liked the video. The remaining two persons do well to smash the like button. So we have the secondary memory, which we have the art disks, we have the tertiary memory, we have the floppy disks, which is also referred to as the diskette, and we have um, the CD-ROM. So with all this being said, we will be discussing about all what I've just highlighted, and um, that will be that for that. So introduction, we have the computer, your personal computer, referred to as PC, is really is a um, is a, a collection of separate working. Excuse me. I think I need to enlarge my material a bit. So um, a collection of separate items working together, definitely, just like in an organization where we have uh, sub, we have departments. You know, we have department an organization is just a function on itself we have different departments and you, you can tell each department has um, a sub department excuse me each department is headed by someone and is a sub department just as human we have different parts of our body so that's what the computer is all about too the computer is made up of different it's made up of separate items different parts different departments all this department working together we have them working together to give you um the required um, information you seek so we have um uh, seven items working together as a team definitely you know you have to work hand in hand you know we have the information when imputed it has to be interpreted by the computer after the computer has received it then it has to be processed then it has to go back to the output where you can now get the information, the result of the information you have just imputed. So there has to be in, in, in our previous class, uh, retrospective class, uh, that's a GST, uh, common English language and communication scheme, something we call coherence. You know, a um, your paragraph working together, being arranged step by step, leading 
from one step of um, your paragraph connecting to the other step and everything is just smooth just like what we have here as well they have all to work together with you as um, a captain now you being the captain you are the one imputing the information so they have to receive then the process and they give it back to you so some of these components are essential others simply take working more pleasant or efficient now adding extra items expand the variety of tasks you can accomplish in with your computer so we have uh, the objective for tonight's class is going to be familiarize the subject with the component of computer enable the student to appreciate the importance of each of computer com components to the overall smooth operation of the computer component definitely are just different parts that enhances the smooth operation of the computer so we have the first thing on our list tonight we have the system units now what the system unit is all about is that if the main unit of the computer is the main unit of your pc that is the system unit have you ever heard of things like from humans like i think something's wrong with my system that's a general word we used to make people understand how we feel inside so you really cannot tell you know what the problem is but you can feel pain in your system so basically what's talking about computer the system unit is the main unit of the computer now it is the computer itself system unit is the computer itself you know, while other units attached to it are regarded as peripherals the system unit is what the computer itself is all about other components attached to it are referred to as the peripherals so it could be viewed as the master conductor orchestrating your pc operation so the master conductor orchestrating making things to happen on your pc is the system unit now the system unit now is far to us the master conductor now we have it is made up of several components like the motherboard the processor the bus the, the buses the buses memory we have power supply units and lots more so just very few among several of us that makes up the system units that makes your computer work smoothly we have one we have the motherboard we have the processor we have the buses we have the memory we have the power supply units and lots more now this unit the system unit has been confused over the years by novice as the cpu now let me tell you something tonight the cpu central processing unit is just a sub department under the department called system units you know several several times we have um, misunderstand or there's a misconception about the cpu and the system units the system unit is what a mix is the computer itself exactly is the computer itself now the cpu is just one of the components that enhances the computer could it could it mean that you can switch on your computer when and even the cpu i leave that for you too so we have that as that so the cpu is is not the central unit itself the central unit is different from the cpu now the cpu which is the central processing unit or simply the processor now the cpu can as well be referred to as the processor as as the name implied the central processing unit um, is a component within the system units let's get this straight C the cpu is one of the components under the system unit. system unit is the organization itself so just like we have the administrative point we have the accountants you know like where i work or the organization where i work we have the administrative chair the administrative office we have accountants I mean, uh, the office where accountants use, we have uh, the, the offices, um, different type of offices. We have the office uh, where uh, managers, we have uh, the main managers, we have the floor managers, we have the supervisors, you know, all these persons, all these individuals, personnel, mix up all those departments and offices, make up the organization. This is our computer is as well. That's what the structure of the computer is like. So now the CPU is just one of the uh, component that makes up the system in it so we have um that as that so um we have so therefore um 
to be wrong to equate stemming with the CPU. I believe we have established that. That is well understood. Now we have front of the system unit. Speaking about the system unit now, talking about the front of the system unit now, you, uh, your unit may display a variety of colored lights on the front panel, including the power button, the including power to ball signals and light to indicate if the hard or floppy disks are being read or written to. So this is just one thing uh, you can find on um, the front of the system unit. Basically, it's more of a, you know, your system unit basically is more of um, the lights in particular. Now, just like what I have on my system now, um, I have this, um, my Wi-Fi uh, light displaying, understand? It's as a result of what we call system unit display of the light. So this is just one thing, and as we have there, I said it could be an indication, definitely. And we have a lot of display on the front. It could be an indication of the act of floppy disks and are being read well or written too. So we have the key locks. In the key lock, you can stop intruders, tampering. All these things at the front. The key lock, you can just lock your keyboard, stop intruder from um, with your PC by using the lock on the front panel. We have the turning key to prevent the queue. So all these things are just on the front of the system units. Could we just say on the front of your computer? So we have the turbo button and the turbo button. We have some pieces of our choice of spreads at which they can run. A turbo switch is usually left to the, to the um, computer runs at its fastest speed. Okay, yeah. The, uh, the turbo button is just more of um, a button that increases the acceleration at which your computer performs. Not all computer have access to all of this button. Has this button as one of their features. We have the reset button. Now, if your PC freeze uh, freezes, um, that you won't respond. It won't definitely, and it won't respond to any command. So trying it um, again uh, by using the reset button. So these are key these are things on the front. We have the power on and off. I believe many of us are acquainted with all this. Um, with this. Um, features we have the floppy disk drive you know um, we have that as that we have um, there's a picture of the floor of the cd room on the dvd drive uh, this is uh, this looks like uh something of 1990s because computers these days do at the, at the office where i work you know uh, the computer we use um, doesn't even have um doesn't even have an external cpu it's more it's more like um it's a smart tv although it's a computer because definitely it, uh, it has its own external keyboard and it has its external outboard. Uh, the computer doesn't have CPU, I believe, or definitely it's, it has its inbuilt. You know, computers we have these days don't use things like this anyway. These are old, these are ancient stuff. I mean, 90s or in early or late, late um, I mean, this is 21st century. Computers don't use this anymore. They use actually, but now it's inbuilt. And if you don't, you barely see things like this. But as you can see, we have the CD room on the DVD drive. Definitely, you insert the disk and it functions on the system. So we have back of the system unit. So now, talking about the back of the system, now we have the fan housing. This is where electronic components, your PC generates a lot of heat. Yeah, even my, my system as well, it has an inbuilt fan as, as small as it is. It has an inbuilt fan to cool off the stem because when the stem definitely works, it gets hot. And that's why professionals uh, in the medical in the medicals will advise not to place directly your system on your legs, as um it um the radiation coming from the stem definitely can um, lead to a certain kind of cancer. So it's not advisable to place it directly on your leg. If you must do that, then let um a flat surface be between the the surface of wherever you are playing if it's your leg. And the system so we have that, that we have the power in and the um, out sockets cables plugged in these are ports where you can connect cables so we have the joystick ports we have the serial ports these are all basically at the back of your of your system units we have sound jacks we have keyboard ports we have a um, network adapter we have this where you connect probably uh, like what we use at work now definitely is um it's a network adapter where you have to connect from the router you have to use the uh, cable to connect from the router to the back of the system unit so we have monitor ports we have base for expansion cards 
we have inside the system it looks as you can see here's a picture of what the system really looks like this is a picture of oh, this, this looks more of a cpu to me and just like what we said earlier don't, miss, don't mistake cpu for cpu it's CPU is just one of the components it's really cannot work on its own it has other things that should, that would enhance its work so that's what it is but it's just inside system in it i hope this is well understood um i hope we are all on the same page uh, so um the brain behind everything that happens in your pc is connect is contained with the system in it now inside the system in it are impressive electronic that runs programs handle instructions and determine the result now most of the more important items are described below so we have a battery we have a disk drive controller card we have a display adapter card as the video card we have the expansion slot we have the ROM chips we have um ram chips we have empty ram ram chip slots we have um as you can see, we have the RAM chip, central processing unit, which is the CPU, just down below here. So all these images, you have the Intel processor. So all these are very important and they make up the system unit. We have the SIM, the micro processors or central processing unit, the CPU is a computer most important single item. It does all the PC thinking and runs the program series of instructions that you request. So that's a central processing unit. It does a lot of work. It does. It's like the brain of the computer. It does a lot. Yeah, but it doesn't make it the system unit itself. It's one of the components that makes up the system unit. So we have CPU support chips. We have maths um, co-processor slots. All those things are what makes. As you can see, we have the CPU um, fan. You now we said behind the mic, behind the system unit, we have the, the cooling slot, which is for fan. So we have the power supply units. We have the add um, disk drive. We have um, the add disk is um, the computer's main permanent storage. Add disk is the computer main permanent um, storage, holding large amounts of data and programs, unlike data held in RAM. The information on the add disk is not affected when the CPU, I beg your pardon, when the computer is turned off. So, uh, read uh, random access memory. Um, the uh, information on it definitely will go off when your computer is turned off but unlike the art disks it doesn't affect the information doesn't go away when you shut your pc it remains the it means there unless you instruct the computer to overwrite it or the art disk is damaged so as you can see this is the picture a picture of um of what the art disk looks like so we have um that as that so we have the motherboard. Now all the electronic components in a PC are mounted on a piece of, excuse me, on a piece of fiberglass called the motherboard. All electronic components, the house, what house or what carries, what serves as an abode for all electronic car components in a PC is called the motherboard. Now it's Thick, um, fiberglass um, fiberglass cannot conduct electricity so each component is insulated from all the others now thin lines of metal on the surface of the fiberglass contain connect pins from one component to another forming the computer electrical circuits so um, I believe um, as this is a picture of what we are seeing. Uh, this is the comp. Um, this is the, what it looks like. This is what the motherboard looks like. And thanks to this picture, we can see the CPU fan. We have um, what all these things are connected. This um, orange looking. If you have your material, I think the soft copy. The color is showing. Oh, Mr. Jolas, it's great to have you join us. Um, the if, if you're using the source copy, I think you will get the clearer picture of what I'm seeing. You know, there's this thing that they keep making mention of, which is um, the fiberglass. Okay, what page? Um, we've actually gone far. Uh, what I have here is page 52. We are treating unit two, um, talking about um, hardware and software of computer. And we are basically talking about the hardware. We are on the system units now. So um, from the image I can see here, um, the 
orange looking background is what we call the fiberglass and there are a lot of things connected to it and just like we're told here the fiberglass cannot conduct electricity now so each component is insulated from now all this cpu socket atx connector system memory pci slots agp slots acl slots floppy we have um, the chipset sort bridge we have the power supply we have the ide connect all these um, components are insulated to the um, fiberglass and they are connected one way or the other to each other so that, electri uh, so that electricity can flow through the board and everybody can and each component can get its own supply so i believe that is clear enough so we have the intel cpu now the intel cpu is the easiest pc where equipped with cpu for intel corporation called the 1808 now the earliest now let's take note of this please the earliest pcs were equipped with a cpu from intel corporation called the 8088 those are the earliest set of pcs now they were they were incorporated incorporated with what we call the 8080s now the net general of pcs the next generation of pcs use cpu known by the number 8286 and were called the cp slash 80 now computers subsequently pcs have been supplied with more and more powerful cpus Do, does it mean that the 8088 is not as powerful as 8286 and and the 8286 is not as powerful as the 8386 in our very first class let's not forget we said something about the generations of computer and we could see how gen um, from one generation to the other the technology gets better just get getting better and improvements were made upon improvement in the same sense we have the earliest pieces were equipped with a CPU called Intel Corporation of 1888. Now we have, after that was introduced, then we have the um, Intel Corporation of 8286, followed by uh, 8386, and followed by 8486. All these things keep coming, development, the technology keeps getting better. So we have. Um, I think I need to close this. So we have that as that. So all these species, all these species processors belong to a family called 80 times 86. In general, you can run the same software on PCs containing different CPUs within the family. Now from the outside, the chips look differently only in size and numbers of pin put inside. Now an 8486 as over 1 million components on the 3,500 that were in the first wow so this is just uh, an illustration of what we are talking about on how it has improved over time now compared to the first to the earliest ones that has just about 3,500 pin put inside i mean 3,500 components earliest one 3,500 the margin is much so you can see how it evolved over time so this makes latest pentiums run over 10 times faster definitely so we have cpu so what is the cpu we have the cpu is certainly the most important pc component definitely cpu is we said something about cpu being the brain CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. Now let us briefly study that name. It is a processor because it processes, moves and calculates data. It is central because it is central of the PC that, excuse me, I think I missed that. It is central as a result of it being central PC data processor. This component is basically responsible for processing PC data. Now, it is a unit because it is a chip which contains millions of transistors. 
in our CPU speed. Now, the speed of the CPU is measured in megahertz, which is MHZ. Let's take note of that. The speed of CPU is measured in megahertz, which is um, MHZ. And um, a computer has central clock that keeps all the components in time with each other. Now, on Earth, it's similar to a clock thick and megahertz is equal to one million ticks per second. Wow, that is crazy. One million ticks per second. Wow. Amazing. As you might imagine, the faster the clock ticks, the faster the computer runs. Wow. There are a lot of things going on in our computer and we actually have no idea about. Now, without the CPU, there would be no PC. Like all the hardware components, the CPU are continually undergoing further development. I bet, I bet on, I can bet on that actually. So you can see the explosive technology, I mean, the explosive technological development in data processing, most clearly in the development of newer and faster CPUs, definitely. Definitely. Now, the CPUs have four years doubled their performance about every 18 months, and there are no indicators that this trend will stop anytime soon. So uh, when we now look at when we look at all the PC, uh, the, C, uh, the CPUs from a broader perspective, we can see that the CPU history is closely tied to components. So I beg your pardon. The CPU um, history is closely tied to companies IBM and especially Intel. IBM and Intel, their brands of CPU producers. So we have um, the CPU have their roots back to Intel's chip. That's 404 from 1971. Please let's take note of that. The CPU have its roots. Uh, CPU has its roots back to Intel's chip 404 from 1971. So we have the, com uh, the compatibility concept has been important throughout the development. So we have the generations of CPU, just like we have the generations of computer. Now we're talking about generations of CPU. Now there are CPUs of many brands name. We have the IBM, we have the Texax, we have the Cyrix, we have the AMD. About four of them. We have the IBM, we have the Texax, we have the um, Cyrix. We have the AMD, the Cyrix is spelled C I, so I'm going to pick up on C Y R I S. And often they make models that overlap two generations. Wow. This can make it difficult to keep track of CPUs. <laughs> Definitely. Here is an attempt to identify the various CPUs according to generations. So we have history and we have the very first. Okay. Um, Okay, um, we have the following table shows the different CPU generation, PC, PC uh, CPU. If you have the material, I believe you can see this as well. We have the PC, we have the CPU, um, CPU we have the year, and um, okay, uh, we have the number of trans uh, transistors. Now, tra the number of transistors is what we are going to be considering to identify which is better and which is um, way improved. So we have the first generation, um, we had the CPUs 8086 and 8088 in the year 1978, and the number of transistor is 20, 29,000. So it goes to 20, 22nd generation. We have third, we have the second generation, we have the third generation, we have the fourth, we have the fifth, and we have the improved fifth, and we have the sixth, we have improved sixth, and it's it ended at six so far. It's stop at six from fourth we have the improved fifth and we have the improved sixth and it stopped at sixth improved sixth which is 27 million four thousand wow number of transistors impressive so we have um that as that so then we can um move um okay oh i beg your pardon it did not stop at the sixth generation it's still went through to the seventh generation which is about 42 million um transistors so we have um data stats so we can see a picture of an intel processor i think yeah so that's that's it intel pentium 
that's what it looks like. So we have digs, we have other digs, we have the floppy digs. You know, computer use digs to store information. Although there is a permanent hard disk that lives inside the system in it, you can use floppy disks to store and move data easily on the PC to, uh, to another. Now, floppy disks comes in two sizes. In two sizes, we have the five or um, five half, uh, five one over four or three half. We have inches, I think five quarter or three half. We have inches in the diameter. We have the smaller disks are able to store more data and are also less easily damaged because of their thicker plastic cases. Now, as both sizes can be either high or low, capacity or density, there are four main varieties of disks available. We have the high capacity disks, which are more expensive, but they can store more, uh, store much more information. We have the low capacity disks. Now we have Speaking about the varieties of digs, we have the high capacity, we have the low capacity, and we have the labeled DS slash DD, which stands for double-sided double density. Double-sided double density. We have the I capacity floppy digs, which are labeled double-sided double density as well. So we have that as that. We have caring for digs. Now the treat floppy digs, I mean from the word caring, you have to do with care and watch out for it. So we have right protector, right protecting trees, um, right protecting digs. Now, right protecting digs uh, means that you pre prevent the computer from erasing or writing over important data on programs that are already there. However, the PC can still read or write protected digs. So um, it's been a long way coming. As we've spoken about a lot of things. So we head straight to conclusion as we draw the, the cutting for tonight's class, we have the system unit is a box housing many components that is well established by now. It is, in fact, the most important part of the computer because it houses the processor, which is the CPU, and other essential components that enables a computer to function. We have a summary. We have actually studied the, compute, the components of the system unit which include the components in the front, back, and those that are inside the system. So thank you very much, guys. This brings us to the end of tonight's class. And we draw the curtain here. We call it a day. I um, want to say thank you for you guys sticking around. Um, I believe uh, we are taking advantage of the uh, available resources at our disposal. And um, we are definitely do our daily study which is very important as an ex exam draws near and um, all this being said um, let's pray that um, God will crown all our efforts with success and we shall come up with a fine course thank you very much guys i look forward to seeing you in the next class bye bye